are living in a, in a day and age that it could very easily be the last day of humanity. The first word that comes to mind is Armageddon, you know, the end of the earth, because, I mean, that's really what it's almost going to be like, you know. Well, it, it just basically means the, the fulfillment of all things. Um, when God created the earth, he, he knew there was going to be a beginning, and he knew the, there was going to be an end. And uh, in his word, he has laid out things that have t taken place uh, and are to take place. Well, one that sticks out in my mind would be uh, um, everyone coming back, the Jewish people coming back to Israel. Um, that's one of the main ones, I think, and that's happening real big today. You can see that real big. The Bible references many things to the final generation. And one of the things that sticks in my mind is that, is that the evil that will enter into the world. And with looking, in, looking, at, looking at my generation and seeing, um, seeing the evil and the hate and the darkness and all that stuff that has been in my generation, I don't want to imagine how much worse it can get. The Bible predicts a lot of worldly disasters that I think that right now we are going through earthquakes and um, strife between countries and things like that. All of these things are a prelude to a specific event that is coming to this earth and that would be the rapture of the church and the return, the second coming of Christ. People have thought we were in the end time since Jesus died. So, does it point towards that? Does it, does it, do I think? Yes. Um, end, but the thing about the end is the end could be one year, it could be a thousand years. Because it's, you know, time isn't of any importance to God. So, when I think about or talk about the end times, it's a matter of being ready, whether it's tomorrow or 2,000 years away. It's kind of hard to decide, you know, if we're at the end times or not. I think, you know, in the Bible it says that, you know, all, like, ever since Jesus died, he said, you know, prepare a way for me, you know, and share the gospel with everyone. So, you know, even the apostles back then felt that they might have been in the end times. The Bible does say that Jesus will return and he will take us, uh, catch us away uh, with him. And, and that after that, there will be impending doom and judgment. When you read the book of Revelation and you get an idea of the, of the state that the world's in and the things that, that are happening at that time, you know, we read about, um, you know, the one world government and those things, obviously they're coming together and we can see that we've got the European Union now that's, that's formed and is on the way and the UN is getting more and more powerful and people are looking at that. Plus you've got, uh, with the internet and the globalization of communication, um, you know, we already have pretty much a completely global economy. Um, so obviously the elements are coming together, but they're not happening yet. The first time Jesus came, no one was looking for it, and it was totally different from everybody that's expected. And I guarantee you the second time he comes, uh, it'll be the same way. Which is almost why, you know, the fact that everyone's talking about the end times, that could almost be an argument against the fact that it's being the end times, because everyone's looking for it. It actually ex excites me a little bit. Um, when I was younger, I used to get all worried about it and scared you know, what, what it was going to mean to me and my family and everything, but now I, I kind of look forward to that time. To be perfectly honest, I look forward to living a, a majority of my life, and um, although I'm not questioning the validity of the rapture itself, but if, if that happened, or if the world collapsed into, into a, the tribulation or whatever, um, it obviously, it wouldn't be the tribulation obviously wouldn't be a good thing, and that, that interrupts what I, what I think of what I want my life to be. So I don't know what it, it, it could happen, but I, I don't necessarily want it to happen right away. Hopefully, you know, I'll be able to be married and have kids and, you know, be a businessman or whatever, and before, you know, all that end time stuff happens, because it's going to be pretty ugly. But. And it's, it's exciting to think that, yeah, I could be asleep and God could come. Jesus could come back. That horse could come. And, or I could be walking or I could be taking a test. Praise the Lord, that would be great.
I'm like a normal smoker. I wake up in the morning and eat two or three cigarettes to get moving. And I, most normal smokers smoke after every meal, and I do that too. Whether I just finished a cigarette right before I ate, I always smoke one right after my meal. My mother was a smoker, and I grew up in a family of smokers. And she always told me that if I was going to smoke, I was going to smoke in front of her, and I was going to support my own habit, and I did. And she didn't say one way, anything one way or the other. How much do you smoke? Approximately a pack a day. Sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less, just depending on my moods and how things go for me. Um, why did you start? Uh, I think my friends, all my friends were doing it, and peer pressure, and saw my parents doing it, and nothing ever happened to them, so. She was dead against smoking for years, and she met up with a few kids and got into junior high, and this was the thing to do. And wasn't what I had in mind, but. Cigarettes are supposed to be illegal for people under 18 to buy. Mm -hmm. How do you get them? Friends, um, like if my friends' parents let me let them smoke, then you know, I, I bum them for my friends. Um, now my parents, I usually I give them the money, and then they'll buy them for me. She's going to do it, whether she's at home or wherever it's at, she's going to do it. I just assume she do it in front of me as to do it behind my back, because she knows how irritated I was when I knew she was doing it behind my back. Are you happy about the decision they've made to let you smoke? No, but um, I figured that the reason why they did it is they'd rather see me kill myself in front of them than behind their back. And it, it really pains me, but I mean, they're, they're doing it, so they can't tell me, no, I cannot do it. I wouldn't want to be hypocritical about it, no. Um, you know, I do it, it's wrong, it's expensive, I wish that they, she didn't do it, but She's going to do it, and I can't stop it. <laughs> They've just released studies about the effects of secondhand smoke on people. Mm -hmm. How much does that concern you with your child? It scares me to death. It really does. And um, because of his asthma, the doctors have advised me several times not to smoke in the house. And we was completely smoking outside. And then my dad just one day pops up, he's like, I'm going to smoke a cigarette, and I said, Dad, please go outside, and he just, he just sat there and smoked a cigarette, and then, you know, that right there is what started us smoking back in the house again, and we, we was going pretty good, it was about two, about two weeks. We don't smoke around him. We have fans going. In the wintertime, we run air filters, uh, humidifiers, um, smoke outside, designated areas in the house um, that he's not allowed to go to because the smoke stays there. You know, the reason why the younger generation, you know, people my age and younger are starting to smoke is because they see advertisements, pretty good looking girls that are real slender that are advertising cigarettes. And they probably think, well, if she's smoking, then, you know, I can be that skinny and I can be good looking like her. And I think it's a lot to do with the advertisements is what draws a lot of people to them. You're going to die one way or another. Why don't you die happy? Does, does cigarette smoking make you happy? No. It's, just, it's a, a habit and an addiction. I could quit if I really, really set my mind to it. of the New Age movement, if you can call it a movement, it's just individuals that are searching for answers that they haven't been able to get. Part of uh, the New Age movement is, uh, quote, magic. It's not pulling nickels out of the ear, but wishful fulfillment by doing candle burning or by doing other types of uh, ritual. And you have ritual in the churches, 
whether it's drinking uh, wine or a wafer. And throughout the ages, people have turned to other means to achieve things, other means being ritual and wishful thinking. Dream catches are Native American tools. And the concept behind it is to filter the dreams so that the bad dreams become entrapped, but the good dreams come through. This one's been uh, enhanced by a quartz crystal as well as little turquoise pieces. Turquoise is a stone the Native Americans use for good health. This is channeled material from someone in the Boulder area. There are five books that come from the channeled entity at the present time. Channeled books are uh, a voice coming to a person, giving information. Sometimes uh, it's automatic writing. Sometimes nowadays it's via computers. <laughs> New Age has always existed. Your parents have experienced New Age, but it was called something else at the time. People have always been interested in past lives and reincarnation and astral projection. Now it's been coined New Age, yet it existed throughout the centuries. Anyone who thinks possibly a little bit differently or is interested in trying new things, whether it's holistic healing, or uh, voodoo or santeria to achieve things is practicing something that a portion of society says is evil or bad because they want to protect their own entity because they don't know any better I'm not casting judgment on that He has a uh, language of about 13 to 15 different things that he'll tell you when you ask him a question. Will this be a good video? It's not in the stars. I personally don't have a negative connotation when I think of a gang. I think it's a natural thing that happens with teenagers. They, they group together. <clears throat> and I think that the way we react against the gangs is very important. I think sometimes we make them more strong and more powerful by giving them attention, status, and even an audience, so to speak. Yeah, I'd, I'd walk the line. What do you mean, walk the line? That's where, like, um... The higher up people get in line, and then you have to walk, and then they all hit you. And there'll be like one line on your left and one line on your right, and you have to walk in the middle. We would be like drive by shootings and breaking people with windows and jumping other like revival gangs. The gang basically is a replacement for the family with some of these kids. So if you want to say the major reason, I guess you can go along with the family idea where it just replaces the family. Because some of them, I don't, they ain't got no family to go to, really. Just, they just think that the gang is their family and they can always rely on them. Just like my mom's not helping me, my dad's not there for me, and just everybody seems against me, so I might as well be, you know, with them, the gang, so I could be against everyone else. I was always thought, why can't I be born to a rich people or some <laughs> rich family? And I don't think it's necessarily uh, a socioeconomic thing. I think it's more of a, a choice that the individual makes. Um, a lot of times, the people that we see that get involved in the gangs are just use very poor decision-making skills. Originally, 
I tried to get jobs and I wasn't having, you know, I wasn't getting nowhere with that. And, you know, I tried to come here and I get in the training programs for jobs and that wasn't working. And then one day my brother was talking to me. He's like, you know, we can get in this deal and we can do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. You know, the money's right there. I thought about it, and I was like, I don't know, I don't know, and I turned it out, the next week, he got busted, and did three years in jail, so I was glad I didn't do that. If you don't have anything, or if you sense you don't have anything, and, you know, you, you hear about the, quote, teen suicide problem, unquote, a lot of it has to do with kids run out of options, doesn't know what to do, feel that life's dealt them a bad hand, there's nothing worse that can happen, so when you start getting to that point, shooting someone or killing, it's not... You know, it's not really a big leap from that point. Well, I was supposed to say, I mean, so well, I, was jail for, I was in jail for a year and a half for it because I was shooting at somebody's mob action. I was arrested for it, and then I got charged with it, a mob action. And I was a year and a half in the, in the county jail in the city. And I got out this year. I just got out, and so I'm about to graduate now. Half people get into gangs just to fight and to be cool, and the other half do it because they ain't got nothing else to do. And then people got to know that there are options if they put their mind to it and don't get lazy. And the other half of the people who want to fight, they should be smart and put their energy to something else. Get into boxing. Mike Tyson gets 30, 30 million to beat people. Why, why go out in the streets and get killed when you could do it the right way? That's what I don't understand. That's, that's how I think of it. Do you believe in God? Yeah, I believe in it, but I don't go to church in that. I mean, I go sometimes, but... Yeah. I mean, because... I don't know, if, if, I didn't, if I didn't look back at enough time, I think I would have been shot. You say you believe in God, and yet you spent some time in jail for shooting at people. How do you relate those two? Do those two connect? No, they don't. Do you think God has any role in your everyday life? Yeah, because during a football game, I always... I say prayers and stuff before a football game, and he always, always do good then. I mean, always do good. Right now, everybody, I, I heard rumors that some of the gangs are going to break up now. Because, like, like I said, a five-point star and a six-point star ain't supposed to get along. And they're getting along, and everybody's saying there ain't no point of having a gang now. So I guess all the gangs, they're just supposed to break up sooner or later. I don't know about that. I know some is, but not all of them.